So sediment and the processes involved in the production of it is an integral part of almost our everyday life. These processes are mostly like that by running water, moving air called wind, running huge bodies of ice and snow called glaciers, the action of the ocean on the coast, the action of gravity that pulls down rock from a higher elevation to lower elevation and also biological agencies like big trees cracking open the rock, like smaller bacteria taking things in dissolution. So sedimentation or production of sediment is due to a large range of processes which are generally grouped as weathering and erosion. Now we will discuss the process of deposition. Deposition refers to settling of the load from the transporting medium to the bottom of the basin of accumulation. Deposition therefore involves two kind of processes, one mechanical, other chemical. Let us first see what causes the deposition of mechanically transported load. A material is transported by a moving fluid, say for our example water. As long as the fluid has enough energy of movement that is kinetic energy, to carry the weight of the load. The kinetic energy is directly proportional to the velocity. So as long as there is a high velocity, there will be high amount of kinetic energy available and the river will be able to carry a very heavy load comprising large boulders, pebbles and also finer grained ones. However, if the river slows down, then the kinetic energy drops. As a result, the load cannot be carried forward anymore and deposited at the bottom as an accumulation of sediments. It is interesting to note that there are situations where the velocity of the moving water measured over a single point on the course of river gradually diminishes. That means to start with it has a higher velocity, higher kinetic energy, so it will be able to deposit only very coarse grain. With the passage of time, the velocity drops and more and more finer grain load will be deposited on top. As a result, it will create an accumulation of sediment, a layer within the sediment whose grain sizes will be very high at the bottom and gradually it will become finer and finer going up, indicating that the velocity of the flowing medium gradually diminished over a period of time. Such beds are called graded bedding and they are of great importance in identifying the environment under which it was deposited. The chemical methods of deposition needs a major change in the chemical environment of the basin where the load is brought by some fluid. If some load came in a chemical solution say carbonates and carbonates are dissolvable in acidic solution. If the basin now has a lower acidity, then the carbonate, especially the calcium carbonate will not be in solution anymore, so it will be deposited. Therefore, the chemical precipitates in a basin is a direct indicator of the nature of the chemistry available at the time of deposition. It may so happen that the solution brought into the depositional basin. time it may become acidic, in that case the carbonates won't be deposited. In other times it may be less acidic when carbonates will be deposited. Therefore the fluctuation of the environment, especially the chemistry of it, directly controls the nature of chemically precipitated sediment. Another example of chemical precipitation is that of deposition of evaporites, a group of sediments formed by evaporation of water. Evaporation of water from a solution leads to supersaturation of the material dissolved in water. After crossing 
a threshold value of saturation, the water cannot hold its entire chemical load and they are deposited. Common salt, gypsum, anhydrite and the mineral sylvite made up of potassium and chlorine are the perfect examples of evaporite. The other very important method of deposition, specially very effective in oceans and seas is that by biologic activity. Lots of organisms starting from real small bacteria to large gastropods secrete calcium carbonate out of the water. The marine water which contains calcium carbonate, these organisms extract from the marine water the dissolved calcium carbonate to build their shells. In addition to calcium carbonate secreting organisms, there are organisms which extract a compound of silicon and oxygen from the seawater. Such group of organisms are for example diatoms and radiolarians. So when they die, their shells accumulate at the bottom of the sea forming sediments. As we discussed earlier, a very prominent example of calcium carbonate deposited by organic means are the coral reefs. Weathering and erosion breaks down the rocks into sedimentary particles. Transportation carries it to a place of accumulation. Deposition forms the accumulation of sediment by allowing them to settle on the bottom of the basin. So, a pile of sediment is produced by the operation of weathering and erosion followed by transportation and finally by deposition. But as we described earlier, sediments are loose particle. They have not consolidated into a solid object called rocks. In order to change the sediments, the accumulation of the pile of sediment into a rock called sedimentary rock, the sediment pile has to undergo consolidation and diagenesis. Sediments are deposited one layer on top of another layer. After a while, a thick pile of sediments are accumulated in the area of accumulation that is at the bottom of the basin. The sediments accumulated at the bottom are pressed from above by the weight of the overlying sediment that squeezes the spaces left between individual sedimentary grains that squeezes out the fluid from there and the volume available for the fluid diminishes. This is called reduction of pore spaces. When the weight is applied on top of the sedimentary layer, it loses its fluid, it loses its thickness and the grains come closer to each other. This is actually a process of compaction of sediments. This leads to lowering of the pore spaces. In addition to this process of compaction by just moving the grains closer together and squeezing out the spore space, there are biochemical and chemical processes that add to the solidification of sediments. New chemical materials are precipitated in the pore spaces that hold the loose grains together like a cement. Cement is a product of lithification process usually referred to as a part of diagenesis. Now we will examine what is diagenesis. Diagenesis encompasses all the physical and chemical processes that starts immediately after deposition of the sediment and the processes that continue till the complete lithification of the sediment. The domain of diagenesis therefore extends from the deposition of sediments to the formation of sedimentary rock by complete lithification. Diagenesis has two components, one that is the physical part as described earlier and one of the important process of diagenesis is reduction of the pore space by bending of softer grains under weight of the overlying sediments around hard grains thereby reducing the pore space. 
the chemical process of diagenesis is twofold. One, it precipitates cements in the pore spaces and cements can be of very many different kinds. Common cements are that of silica, oxides of silicon and calcium carbonate and at times iron oxides. The other part of diagenesis is alteration of already deposited organic material into some other forms like change of organic material into kerogens which are very high density organic molecules with very low solubility. These kerogens on heating produces oil and natural gas. Now there is a big controversy regarding where should be the boundary of diagenesis be drawn. As we said the diagenetic processes starts immediately after deposition and continues till the lithification. Now most of the workers agree the temperature range of diagenesis run between 20 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius and the pressure during diagenesis never exceeds more than 1 kilo bar that is 1000 times that of the atmospheric pressure. Beyond that range when the temperature is higher diagenesis merges into a process called metamorphism and at the other end where the temperature is lower there is a boundary between the surface processes of weathering and diagenesis. So the entire range of sedimentary processes is weathering, transportation, deposition followed by diagenesis. A sediment is derived from weathering, transported by transportation, deposited from the transporting medium and finally forms the lithified sediment. This entire set of processes, the controls of these processes and product of these processes that is sedimentary rocks are studied under a common branch of science called sedimentology. Sedimentology essentially deals with the processes that are operating on the surface of the earth. Therefore, this branch of science helps us to understand the prevailing conditions on the surface of the earth at present and what it was in the past. Study of sediments therefore of paramount importance in understanding the environments that existed on the surface of the earth. For the study of environmental reconstruction and the paleo environment, the most essential tool is to study the sediments deposited during that period of time. Another interesting concept that must be stated which are intimately associated with sedimentology is that of rock cycle. Sedimentary rocks are product of surface processes. So if I trace the history of development of sediments from a rock, it goes like this. There is a pre-existing rock exposed on the surface acting upon by weathering agents broken into small fragments and particles transferred to a basin of deposition by physical and chemical means, deposited by mechanical and also chemical processes, consolidated into a rock, sedimentary rock by processes of diagenesis. Then two cases may happen. This sedimentary rock may expose to the surface again and being subjected to weathering and erosion agent and the cycle starts. The second possibility is that this sedimentary rock can be brought down deeper into the earth where it can be metamorphosed and the metamorphic rock when by tectonic processes comes to the surface, the cycle begins again with weathering. The second alternative is that when the sedimentary rock is taken down deeper into the earth as in cases of subduction zone, it may melt, form a magma, come to the surface or close to the surface forming an igneous rock. When the igneous rock is exposed to the elements of nature that is the agencies of sedimentary processes operating on the surface of the earth, they face a weathering and the same cycle starts again. Thus the lifespan of a sediment is from weathering to diagenesis and subsequently to melting and metamorphism. It is interesting to note the sedimentary rocks comprise a very small portion of the earth's crust, but most part of the earth's crust is covered with sediments 
and the, it is the sediments that give us the fuel of our life that is the coal and petroleum. So by studying the sediments, how they are formed, where they are formed and what kind of chemical conditions control their formation is of great importance for man's survival because the most important fuel for the civilization, petroleum, comes out of sedimentary rock and petroleum is a product of diagenesis of organic material deposited in a sediment. So sedimentology leads us to conclude on the change of environment through time and sedimentology also helps us to find out where the petroleum is for the benefit of mankind.